foreign articles as well as their budget as well as the town municipal budget and foreign articles before we start if everyone would rise to pledge allegiance to the flag. different lately and we have a remote secretary unlike years when we've had our secretary with us so if I could have all the members on my committee who are present tonight um, start out with the roll call Nick I'll start down there with you sure Nicholas Bridal Scott Blair Mike Pierce Sonny Kravitz Jerry Zanart Ryan Lapham Vice Chairman Eileen Latimer Chairman Stephen LeBranch Mike Lopez Jamal Lachlan Sandra Nicholson Jones Bill Bean Madam Thank Chair, can I, make, can I make a motion real quick? I'd like to make a motion to allow employees and school reps to speak tonight regardless of whether or not they live in the town of Hampton. I'll second. second. All right. All those in favor? All right, I need a roll call on that. Bridal. Blair. Here's. Sonny. Illinois. Lapham. Set forth on the budget proposed 
with the warrant as amended by vote of the first session for the purposes set forth therein totaling $26,599,431. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $26,528,092, which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by previous action of the Town of Hampton or by law or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40 colon 13 comma 10 and Roman numeral 16 to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only. Majority vote is required. This has been recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 5-0-0. Fiscal impact note on the bottom of uh, that would have that has to be figured out. We didn't deliberate that till late last night. So we discussed this late. This is the figure that we ended up with last night. Now to put this on the warrant, can I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Jerry Second. motion. Second. 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 Michael Clough. All those in favor of this figure, and again I ask you by a roll call. Blair. Pierce. Sonny Kravitz. Zanoni. Lapham. Latimer. <coughs> Can you affirm it? Yes. Bluff. Malacca. Lad. Nickerson. Okay. And those with a no? Bridal. Jones. Bean. LeBranch. Abstentions. Gentlemen. Okay, so a vote of um, ten to four. Motion passes. Thank you. I'm going to open up the public hearing now, and I must remind today is Thursday, January 14, 2016, for the audio record. And if I could ask Mr. Lunny to guide us through the Warren articles, if you would read them through. Like them read in full? Yes, please. Thank you. Article number one. Shall the Hampton School District vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $24,945,000 for reconstructing and equipping the Hampton Academy Middle School and authorize the issuance of not more than $24,945,000 of bonds or notes in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act, which is RSA Chapter 33 and authorize the school board to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon. And further, raise and appropriate the additional sum of $460,550 for the payment of the first year's interest on the bond or notes authorized by this article and authorize the school board to apply for, accept, and expend any grants for this purpose and take any other action necessary to carry out this vote. The school board and the budget committee recommend this appropriation. A three-fifths vote is required. Do I have anyone who wishes to speak to this article? Okay. Seeing no one, we'll recommend this to deliberative as accepted by the uh, <coughs> school board and the budget committee to recommend. Moving on to Article 2. 
Article 2 is the operating budget and it reads, shall the school district raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant, or as amended by vote of the first session, for the purposes set forth therein, totaling $20,184,320. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $20,256,680, which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by previous action of the district or by law, or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40, colon 13, sections 10 and 16, to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only. The school board and the budget committee recommend this appropriation. A majority vote is required. As a parenthetical note, Warrant Article Number Two: the operating budget does not include appropriations in any other Warrant Articles. Do I have anyone here wishing to speak to uh, Article Two? Seeing none, move to recommend this at deliberative. Going on to Article 3. Article 3 is a collective bargaining agreement and it reads, to see if the school district will vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton School Board and the Seacoast Education Association covering the four-year period from July 1, 2016 to June 30, 2020, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels. For year 2016-17, the estimated increase is $239,020. For the year 17-18, it is $254,533. For the year 2018-19, the estimated increase is $252,502. For the year 2019-20, the estimated increase is $250,748. And further raise and appropriate the sum of $239,020 for the 2016-17 fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at current staffing levels in accordance with the most recent collective bargaining agreement. The school board and the budget committee recommend this appropriation, the majority vote required. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this article? <coughs> Again, seeing none, move that it goes on the warrant as recommended. Article, article, number, four. article number four is the long-term maintenance article and it reads to see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of three hundred thousand dollars to continue long-term maintenance repair and modernization work to include technical and or engineering services at hampton's marston and center school buildings and grounds this article is a continuation of an annual program plan to keep the buildings updated and in good condition thereby protecting the taxpayers investment Projects planned for 2016-17 are listed below. This will be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7 section 6 and will not lapse until these projects are completed or June 30th, 2018, whichever is earlier. The school board and the budget committee recommend this appropriation. A majority vote is required and has become the practice. The projects listed are as follows at Marston School, replace a roof over the original building in the 1975 edition in a phased approach for $215,000. Implement security improvements in a phased approach, 25000 for a subtotal of 240000 at Marston. At Center School, replace original classroom sinks and countertops in a phased approach for $20,000. ADA improvements district-wide, $5,000. Replace hallway entrance doors to the gymnasium, $5,000. Roof repairs in an ongoing manner, $5,000. And implement security improvements in a phased approach, $25,000, a subtotal of $60,000 at Center School. Thank you, Mr. Lenny. Is there anyone who would like to speak to this warrant article? Again, seeing none, we'll move it to the warrant. As recommended. Going on to number five. Number five reads as follows. Shall the school district vote to authorize the school board to accept conveyance of two parcels of property from the town of Hampton on such terms and conditions as the school board determine are appropriate? The first, commonly known as the Arnold property, and the second being known as the Martell property. Both parcels abut the property of the school district on Academy Avenue and have been leased to and used by the Hampton School District for many years for bus, school bus loading and unloading and staff parking. The school board recommends approval of this article, majority vote required. Again, is there anyone here to speak to this article? Seeing none, move it to Warren and go on to number six. 
Number six is a citizen petition article. It has, uh, its petition has been reviewed by the school district clerk and uh, determined to be valid. It reads as follows, to see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate funds in the amount of $45,600 to provide child benefit services in accordance with RSA 189-49 for students who are residents of the Hampton School District and attend Sacred Heart School located in Hampton, New Hampshire. By petition, the school board and the budget committee recommend this appropriation. The majority vote required. Do I have anyone who'd wish to speak to this foreign article? You have one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sonny. Oh, Sonny. Sonny, how do you stand up, Madam Chair? Yeah. My position on. Uh, my position on this petition warrant article is, I should, don't believe that taxpayer money should be spend on private schools. I mean, if this was somebody who wants to build a mosque in Hampton, I don't think they would have a law on it. I've had this, you know, the Constitution says, separates church and state, and I don't believe we should use taxpayer money to, to fund sacred art. People want to go to sacred art, no problem. Is there anyone else who wishes to would take the mic. If I could ask you to give us your name and address. Thank you. I'm Cheryl Grella. I'm 20 Dearborn in Hampton. Um, our principal, Teresa Morn Bailey, could not be here tonight due to illness. Um, I represent both our school, I work in the front office, and I have two children who currently attend Sacred Heart and another who graduated from Sacred Heart for a cumulative of 27 years of schooling that they did not attend the Hampton Public School. Um, we would like to thank all the Hampton residents for their support of the CBS funds to Hampton students who do attend our school. We have 48 Hampton students at our school, 31 elementary and 17 middle school students. The average cost per pupil in Hampton School District is $15,212. We are asking for a total of $950 per Hampton student. These funds help with our nurse, educational technology, supplies, and textbooks. The sum total $45,600 for those 31 students. These funds will not be used for any religious purposes. We thank you for your support, as you've done for many years. We, we thank you and ask you for your support again. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to remind members up here on the committee, we are here to listen tonight. This is not time for our opinion. Yeah, I'm sorry. We've got a kind of like a situation going here. Is that a little bit better? I'll try to speak up, but I don't have much of a voice left. Um, again, I'm reminding members of my committee that we are here to listen tonight and not for our opinions. Thank you. Do I have anyone else to speak up on this article? All right. Seeing none um, or no one else, I will close this out and move to warrant <clears throat> and go on to... Um, oh, we're there. That's it, number six. Thank you very much. We'll now close the public hearing on the SAU 90. Thank everyone for coming. And it is now 725. Madam Chair, may I inquire what the vote was on uh, the budget committee on the SAU, I'm assuming on the Sacred Heart Warrant article? Um, Yeah. Your vote the other night was 13 in favor, zero opposed, and one abstention. Thank you. So we had no opposition at the budget committee when we voted on this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I would ask before we get going on the town, do we have current copy of the Warren articles with the votes as they were taken in the meetings French.
answer to your question, we have not been given the votes in the Warren Articles and the Warren Articles of Good. I think it's immaterial because you're going to have to put them to the warrant anyhow. So, uh, unless you want to revote them at this point, um, let's just take the art. I think a lot of that has had to do with the technical difficulties. It has. The minutes are there and have been entered um, to last night. Uh, we weren't given the minutes, so I can't. The minutes were sent from last week. And usually it is the secretary who ends up putting that in, so we do not have our votes. Right. Well, we'll have to look them up, and we will. If we had no knowledge the minutes were there. We were busy preparing everything today. Uh, we did not know they had been recorded. We looked before, and they weren't there, so we had nothing to go with. Okay, thank you. Um, should somebody necessitate a vote, it will be, yeah, we, we've got these. We can go back and look, but it will take time. All right, so I may be asking for help at the table. I have uh, your minutes here. Uh, yeah, we have we have minutes. I don't know why they don't have minutes. So, all right, bear with us tonight. Yeah, they sent them to you. And the secretary said One more thing. Where's the new warrant article? Yeah. The new warrant article. I thought I had it. Which one was that? This is so much better. Like this base. shuffle. Before you already had a lot of numbers come in very, very, very late. And we've been working in meetings every other day for the past two weeks with something still not in our hands and changing. So please bear with us. We do have the information, but it has not been assembled um, as it usually is by others other than us. And I have a question right out of the chute. I noticed that the Warren articles were renumbered, and 10 is now the sewer bond, and that is where it should be and not the budget. Okay. Then that will be the one that we will start with. If we could have um, either a selectman or town manager read Article 10 for us. Chairman, Article 10, yes, shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $2 million for the purpose of constructing the necessary upgrades to the wastewater treatment facility septic receiving station by purchasing and installing a Raptor septic acceptance plant or its equivalent in order to process septic effluent containing materials that otherwise would A, 
clogged pumps and valves, B, decrease the effectiveness of the plant aeration, dewatering and filtering equipment, and C, decrease, ma decrease maintenance costs. <coughs> Excuse me. Attached there too will be a vehicle and equipment wash down facility that will accommodate all of the town equipment and operate in accordance with the requirements of the Clean Water and Clean Air Acts. Such appropriation includes improvements to the recycled wastewater yard piping to include the upgrading and replacement of the piping systems for the delivery of plant water to increase the efficiency of the treatment plant. Such appropriation includes safety improvements to the sewer plant valve pit, a hazardous work environment that employees must enter to operate the flow valves that control flow from the primary and second and sludge thickening tanks. Included in the appropriation is the design, engineering, purchasing, and installing of an emergency generator to power the aeration blower system that is not now connected to emergency power. A loss of power means a loss of secondary treatment in the plant that the town is required to maintain under the law and its state and federal permits. Such items shall be raised, such sums shall be raised by the issuance of municipal bonds or notes for a period not to exceed 30 years under and in accordance with the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen and the Town Treasurer to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon, to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept, and expend federal or state funds or other available funds towards the projects in accordance with the terms and conditions under which they are received and to borrow in anticipation of the receipt of such aid or the issuance of such serial notes or bonds as provided by the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33, and amendment, an amendment. And to authorize the participation in the state revolving fund, our SRF RSA 286-14, established for the purpose and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept, and expend such monies as they become available from the federal and state uh, governments and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to implement such cost-effective measures or solutions as are <coughs> provided for the future as, as they deem to be in the best interest of the town that may result <coughs> in the in the lesser amount of expenditure that is authorized in this warrant article and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any and all actions necessary to carry out and protect in the best interest of the town of Hampton. Three-fifths vote required. Mm -hmm. And the vote on this came in tied at seven yes and seven no. Anyone? Negative. That was six, seven, one, Madam Chair. I'm sorry. Could you revise that for me? appropriations for special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately. The amount set forth in the budget posted with the warrant is amended by vote of the first session for the purposes set forth therein, totaling $26,599,429. Shall this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $26,528,092, which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by previous action of the Town of Hampton or by law, or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 30, RSA, excuse me, RSA 4013, uh, sections 10 and 16, to take up the issue of a revised budget, operating budget only. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this article? Madam Chair, I believe that reading needs to be adjusted to say uh, the, the 
add the two dollars that we added earlier today. We discussed that. Yeah, but he read the lower number. Oh, I'm sorry. Fred, that last number of 39? Yes. We discussed it when we just voted on it. It's due to rounding in the system. 431. That was a 31 you're talking we turned, about. Yeah. We, turned, we gave you the benefit of $2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Works for the $2. Don't spend it all in one place, I know. We won't. Um, but just for the record. Thank you. And we just took a vote on that. That vote was 10 yes, 4 no. No one to speak to this? Okay. Seeing none, we will move on. Send this to the liver. Um, go on to Article 12. Madam Chairman, Article 12 shall assign a hand to vote to approve the cost items contained in a one year collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Firefighters Local 2664, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. 2016, $54,912, 39 weeks over 2015 level. 2017, $18,304, 13 weeks over the 2015 level. And further, to raise and appropriate the sum of $54,000, $912 to fund the cost items related to the Hampton Firefighters Local 2664 salaries and benefits for 2016. Such sum represents the additional salaries and benefits over the 2015 budget level for the 2016 portion of the one year that is contained in the agreement between the Town of Hampton by its Board of Selectmen and the Firefighters Local 2664 pursuant to RSA 273A. The estimated total cost of the agreement and salaries and benefits and for the one contract year is $73,216 majority vote required. We had a vote of 12 yes and one no on this one. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak to this warrant article? Seeing none, I'll move on to article 13. <coughs> Madam Chairman, Article 13. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items contained in a one-year collective bargaining agreement reached between the Town of Hampton, between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Fire Officers Local 3017, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels. 2016, $17,751, 39 weeks over 2015 level. 2017, $5,917 over uh, 13 weeks over the 2015 level. And further, to raise and appropriate the sum of $17,751 to fund the cost items related to the Hampton Fire Officers Local 3017, salaries and benefits for 2016. Such sum represents the additional salaries and benefits over the 2015 budget level the 2016 portion of the one year um, that is contained in, in a collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Hampton by its Board of Selectmen and the Fire Officers Local 3017 pursuant to RSA 273A. The estimated total cost of the agreement in salaries and benefits for the one year contract year is $23,668, majority vote required. Again, this vote was the same as the last, um, which was 12 yes, one no. Do I have anyone wishing to speak to this warrant article? Norman Silverdick, um, 70 Tide Mill Road. I'm also a spokesman for the Rational Taxpayers of Hampton. And while we've just received the Warren articles, the fact that the fire department contract was uh, rejected by the voters last year and our organization did not support that contract. This year we find this contract to be uh, very reasonable and uh, I will recommend to our group when we do meet and deliberate the items for the warrant article and the preparation yellow sheet that uh, the, the 
contract with the firefighters be accepted? Thank you, Mr. Silverton. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this warrant article? All right. Seeing none, we will move this one and go on to the next. Article 14. Madam Chair, would you like to discuss the change before or after reading uh, that we discussed earlier? After. After. Yeah, why don't you read it as it is, Very and good. then we can go backwards on the change. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in a three-year collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Police Association officers, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels. 2016, 72,616, 39 weeks over the 2015 level. 2017, 110,583, 52 weeks over the 2016 level. 2018, 114, 445, over 52 weeks over the 17, 2017 level. 2019, 26,353, 13 weeks over the 2018 level. And further, to raise and appropriate the sum of 72616 to fund the cost items related to the Police Association officers' salaries and benefits for 2016. Such sum represents the additional salaries and benefits over the 2015 budget level for the 2016 portion of the three years that are contained in a collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Hampton by its Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Police Association officers pursuant to New Hampshire RSA 273A. The compounded cumulative cost impact over the three contract years is estimated to be $660,273. Majority vote required. Madam Chair? Yes. This is a uh, reworded article from the one we uh, discussed in the Budget Committee. Uh, as such, I think we ought to discuss it now as a Budget Committee and then open it for public after we vote on the article. And that's true for the next two articles as well. Do you have copies of these for us in writing? They were as you walked in, coming in now. Yeah. Um, I would recommend to the committee right now that we move discussion, further discussion on Article 14 and 15 to the end of our session. That's all right, President. Madam Chair, I would suggest that the, the presentation of the warrant article with new wording effectively nullifies our vote on it. warrant articles that were worded differently. True, true. That so true. we have no budget committee stand on this to present to the public. And we really ought to do that so that the public can speak to whatever position we're taking as well as the merits of the contract itself. No. Just as we're doing with all the other articles. No. Yes, Scott. The you know, the meat of the of the article is the breakdown of the impact two thousand sixteen to two thousand and nineteen. That hasn't changed. It's it's a number in the in the last sentence that, that changed. Right. And, I, and I believe this, this article's passed uh, the budget committee. So well, a, diff a different article, a different wording passed. In, in, the I, last, in the last sentence that doesn't impact the, uh, the taxpayer at all. Well, I disagree. A different article is a different article. Madam Chairman, if I may, yes, that this new amount is twice as much as what was in that similar line when we were considering it at the budget committee. And when you're trying to make the voter aware of the actual cost, this is closer by times two what was in the original order when we voted on. So I think that is a very serious change to the order. Thank you. Madam Chair, would you like me to overview what took place? I'm sorry? Would you like me to overview what took place for the public? Yeah. Well, we so we could you pretty much have an overview last night of our confusion and with what happened. The problem right now is procedural um, and where we are because we're in the middle of a public hearing 
usually we take re-votes at the end of a session, but we're looking at an amendment too, so I believe I have to shut down this public hearing to go into a vote and then re-enter it. Is that correct? Let me ask legal counsel. Procedurally, I'm, I'm a little stuck right now. <coughs> I think you should take it up now, right in the order it's in. Take it in the order and take a re-vote. Sure, if that's, getting, if that's what you wish. And I'm getting that correct from counsel. That's my recommendation. Um, to give a little bit of background on where we got yeah. stuck on this, right. we found um, somewhat of a defect in the wording as we were reviewing this last night, somewhere around 11 o'clock, um, with very little time to change it. Um, it would have to, to be done today, and I'm sure there was some scrambling, Jamie, that went on today to do just that. If you'd like me to, I can tell you what we took place today. If you would. Based on the discussion last night, where that bottom line number, and again, uh, okay. we talked last night, historically this is the number that was copied from what the wording was in a prior year, mm -hmm. um, and the discussion last night was to be on an overabundance of caution that we appropriately um, noticed that with a compounded interest. Now, first, as you did with the uh, teacher's contract before, that, that number is not required by law. It's something that the town has included starting in 2014. So that we're clear, it doesn't have to be there. But over an abundance of caution last night, there was some de debate discussion. So we went back this morning, reassessed it, rechecked with council, and felt over an abundance uh, of being open. We recalculated based on the discussion from last night, Mr. Blair. Uh, we spoke to him as well today. And so we moved forward the selectmen of approved rewording of that last sentence so that we can make sure that we're being as clear as possible with what the compounded impact is over that three-year contract period. That's really it. Can you give me that last sentence again? The last sentence reads, the compounded cumulative cost impact over the three contract years is estimated to be 660,273. motion for a revote on this article? I, I will move uh, Article 14 for approval, Madam Chair. I'll second it. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, if I may ask Jamie, uh, so the Board of Selectmen met, uh, I assume, sometime today. That's correct. Uh, since we were there until midnight last night, pretty much. It had to have been today. And uh, they decided to change the wording to reflect the total uh, cumulative cost, as it's phrased in here. That's correct. And uh, as a result of the discussion from the Budget Committee that took place last night, I congratulate the Board of Selectmen for, uh, for taking action and correcting this as best as they could, given the short time frame that we have to work on, and I'm ready to vote, Madam Chair. Ma Madam Chairman. Uh, any other Mr. discussion? Ma Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Jones did not vote for this in the affirmative, so he is not allowed on your uh, policy, according to you, Mr. Jones. Point of order, Madam Chair. Yes. This is not a motion to reconsider. Right, this, this is, is a motion for the article Michael. as presented tonight. And in fairness to the article, it came in the wrong way. And um, I think that considerably affected the vote, not on the substance of the CBA, but on the substance of the number that was incorrect. So I am going to ask one more time is there anybody else on this committee who has a question before i take a re-vote on this article a new vote a new vote that's right okay all those in favor i roll call bridal blair uh kravitz lapham latimer labranch bluff bullockland lad nickerson Jones in the affirmative. Thank you. Being affirmative. Okay. Those voting no? Zanoy. Yeah. Zanoy. Okay. And that carries by a vote of 12 to 2. No abstentions. Madam Chair, the. Uh, Article 15 has the same That's right. procedural uh, need, so I move Article 15 as written. I'll no second. Can I have the correction, Jim? Could you read the correction on that last line? Sure, the last line it reads, the compounded cumulative cost impact over the three years of the contract, three contract years, 
is estimated to be 133,422. Okay, and that was moved by Jones, seconded by Sandy. Mm -hmm. And vote on this. Roll call from the end. Bridal. Blair. Clapham. Latimer. LaBranch. Clough. Holock. Lad. Nicholson. Jones in the affirmative. B. And those to the no. Zanoy. No, I'm Pierce. Fine. So Pierce and Zanoy, no abstentions. So again, the vote is 12 to 0. Madam Chair, we have the, and lastly, the same procedural challenge on Article 16. So I move Article 16 is written. A second. And one more time, Jamie. The compounded cumulative cost impact over the three contract years is estimated to be $336,855. Okay. Roll call vote from the end, Nick. Bridal. Blair. Robert. Slapo. Latimer. LaBranch. Love. Lock. Vlad. Nickerson. Jones in the affirmative. B. And no. Pierce. Illinois. No abstentions. Again, that passes 12 to 0. All right. And. Now that we've cleared that up, is there anyone who wants to speak on any of these three articles? One in particular, Norm, or are you taking the whole set? I'm taking the whole set. Thank you. Norman Silverick, 75 Mill Road, spokesman for the rational taxpayers of Hampton. I recognize that the unions need an increase, no question about it. However, this increase seems to me way out of order. I received a, a uh, letter from the Social Security Administration. I see some of the members of the Budget Committee are also retirees like myself. The Social Security Administration told me I wasn't going to get any increase in 2016, but uh, in the amount of income I get, but they sure increased my medical expenses, which went up about 35%. And I'm sure that's true with anybody else who's on fixed income. And in the past, we passed, in 2014, contracts that gave a 1.25% increase to the unions. And suddenly, we're dealing with 2.5%, 3% increases for the next three years. I think that's way out of line with the cost of living, which is running around 1%. And it should be reflective of what is reasonable for people to expect in the way of wage increases. This agreement are totally insensitive to the taxpayers, and I would really be surprised if they were passed. I ask that the Budget Committee reconsider these three articles and re-examine their vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Silver. Madam Chair, procedural question. Are you taking motions to reconsider after we're done with all the articles or as they occur? Yes, as they all have been Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to Article 17. Or actually, was there anyone else who wanted to speak to this, to the CBAs? No? All right, seeing none, moving on to Article 17. <clears throat> Madam Chair, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $643,225 for the improvements on streets consisting of paving overlays, adjustments to structures to permit paving, repairs, <coughs> excuse me, and replacement to drainage, crack sealing, curb installation, and improvements to town parking areas on the following streets. Landing Road south of State Route 101, Old Stage Road, Acorn Road, and Driftwood Road. Set appropriation to be offset by the State Highway Block Grant estimated to be $299,804. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32-7 Roman 6 and shall not lapse until the projects are completed or by March 31st, 2018, whichever occurs sooner. Majority vote required. 
Okay. I have a 14 yes vote on that. Can I have that confirmed across the table? Okay. Yes, I have the same thing. confusion across the table is that the war articles were renumbered after votes were taken so we're checking to make doubly sure that we're all on the same page all right is there anyone wishing to speak to this warrant article seeing none I move the warrant madam chairman yes. article article 18 Charlotte Town and Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $353,000 for the purchase of the following replacement vehicles for the Department of Public Works. One one-ton truck with dump body plow and wing. Two 35,000 gross pound gross vehicle weight dump trucks with plows and wings. And replace the replaced vehicles to be traded in is deemed to be prudent by the Public Works Director, the Town Manager, and the Board of Selectmen. Shall be a non lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6 and shall not lapse until the purchase the purchases are completed or by March 31st 2017 whichever is sooner majority vote required do I have anybody wishing to discuss this article all right on this article we had a vote of 1301 So seeing no one wishing to speak to this, we'll move on to Article 19. Madam Chair, Charlottetown and Hampton vote to appropriate the sum of $300,000 to be added to the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund created under Article, Article 16 of the 1998 Annual Town Meeting in accordance with the provisions of RSA 35. <coughs> for the purpose of maintaining and or reconstructing streets. Majority vote required. We had a vote on this of 10-4. We all in conclusion on that. Um, anyone wishing to speak to this article? Seeing none, we'll move right along to Article 20. Madam Chairman, Charlottetown and Hampton vote to amend the non-lapsing Article 16 that was passed at the 2014 Annual Town Meeting for the purpose of replacing the outfall, outfall culvert located below the Gristmill Dam on High Street. To raise and appropriate an additional $147,500 for that purpose and to remove the contingency as, as to offsetting revenue in the 2014 Article 16 and to change the purpose of, the 2000, of that 2014 article to read as follows. For the purpose of replacing the outfall culvert located below the Gristmill Dam on High Street to prevent flooding of High Street and to perform a drainage study of Meadow Pond and to assist in obtaining state and federal funding for these projects and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept, and expend for such purpose any funds from the State of New Hampshire, the federal government, and any private source as may become available. Note that the, the $235,000 has already been raised from taxes to complete this project and to raise the appropriate, uh, appropriation the sum of $147,500 that was originally to be provided by the state which is no longer available to fund that said sum with the sum of $73,750 one half of the $147,500 to come from the unassigned fund balance, a fund containing unexpended appropriations from prior years as of December 31st, 2015, and the sum of $73,750, one half of the sum of the $147,500, will be raised from taxation. The non-lapsing deadline in the original article remains the same. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6, and shall not lapse until the completion of the culvert and replacement of the drainage study has been completed by, or by March 31st, 2018, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required. Okay, this foreign article had a vote. It, it was not recommended by Budget Committee by a vote of 671. And anyone wishing to speak? Mary Louise? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, by, by the way, just a quick aside for you. 
I used to, when I chaired the budget committee, always be annoying people about using the microphones. It's even with a small audience tonight, you want to make sure the sound gets through on the recording that's going out to the public. And it's really, really difficult to hear some of you. So if you could speak up a little bit. I know I bellow, but speak up a little bit so we can hear you. I'm opposed to Article 20, and I will tell you why. It has several problems that I can identify. The idea of replacing the High Street culvert uh, came up in conjunction with decommissioning the Gristmill Dam, uh, which was voted on but never accomplished. Uh, now the Gristmill uh, Dam replacement is out for a study, uh, engineering study and bid, and I think that if we are going to replace that culvert, it should be done in conjunction with either rebuilding the dam or decommissioning the dam. I think this is premature. Uh, I think that the, uh, I live in the area, and I think that the war road has not flooded out yet. It is c consistent flooding down there, but it has not gone yet. And I'd rather wait. I think a drainage study is more appropriate in concert with planning the dam. Uh, pro process. Uh, so I think this is is not not something that I'm comfortable with. I don't like doing the appropriations in pieces, and I object to all of the articles that want to take half of the money or all of the money from the unassigned fund balance. I think that's a very poor way to budget. I think we should either raise and appropriate or forget it. And uh, I am not at all in favor of this article. Is there anyone else wishing to speak to this article? <coughs> Seeing none, I move it and go on to Article 21. Madam Chairman, Charlottetown and Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $85,000 for the geotechnical investigation and preliminary design for the reconstruction and or replacement of the seawall located at Bicentennial Park and temporary repairs during the preliminary design phase. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation for RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6 and shall not lapse until the project is completed or by March 31st, 2021, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required. This was recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 13-1-0. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this article? Seeing none, I'll move on to Article 22. I walk. <laughs> Madam Chair, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of forty-five thousand six hundred and fifty dollars for the maintenance, repair, reconstruction, and replacement of sidewalks as needed? including $5,000 for the installation of ADA compliant ramps and, and crosswalks at crosswalks. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6 and shall not lapse until the project is completed or by March 31st, 2017, whichever is sooner, majority vote required. This was recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 1400. Is there anyone wishing to speak to this article? Seeing none, we'll move on to Article 23. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to conduct a household hazardous waste collection day during the calendar year 2016 and to authorize the Board of Selectmen A, to permit the towns of Hampton Falls and Newcastle to participate in said collection day at their own expense, B, to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept, and expend for such purposes any funds from the state of New Hampshire, federal government, and any private source that may become available. Majority vote required. This was recommended by the Budget Committee with a vote of 14-0-0. Is there anyone wishing to speak to this board? Seeing none, we'll move on to Article 24. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $225,000 to complete the appraisals of the Town of Utility Properties as part of the 2016 Townwide Reevaluation of Property in Hampton 
as required by the state constitution and the Department of Revenue Administration under RSA 75-1, RSA 75-4, and RSA 75-8. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation for RSA 3276 uh, and will not lapse until the town-wide reevaluation is completed or by March 31, 2017, whichever is sooner majority vote required. This was recommended by the Budget Committee with a vote of 12-2-0. Is there anyone wishing to speak to this or not? Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the uh, Budget Committee. Um, I just want to clarify a few things and give the homeowners uh, some more information um, from our meeting on the 5th. Um, at that time, I wanted to I want to clarify some comments I made, or at least one comment. Um, I made a comment that the completion of, doing, of these utility appraisals would help in equalizing uh, the state education tax. As utilities pay the state directly for the education tax, um, it, it wouldn't directly affect the setting of the state's tax rate. What it would do is indirectly help offset an inflated state sale uh, state um, education tax. Um, the state, in their completing uh, utility valuations, they're not predicated on fair market value. Um, which could actually inflate the state education tax, and I believe that it does. Um, if you think, you've got to think about this. If those state utilities are undervalued by 10, 20, 30 percent, or even greater in some instances, and I gave you an example on the fifth of you know some utilities being eight to 10 million below fair market value, that this would actually inflate the state education tax. Um, after this, as, as part of a process the DRA completes is that they meet with each utility. They negotiate how much money the utility is going to pay. That number could even be below the, the values that the DRA sets for utility purposes. Um, so how much more important is the fact that utilities pay the town, county, and school portion as well? So by not valuing these utilities at fair market value, not only would it not only would it not offset the state property tax or the state education tax, it would actually undervalue or underassess them for paying those other portions of the tax, which isn't fair to you, the homeowner, um, so that everyone should be fair and equitably assessed. And if there's a perfect time to do this, it's part of the 2016 revaluation. Um, the Warren article states that there's going to be an eight cent effect by spending $225,000. It is my opinion that it will not be that. In fact, by doing this, it actually would probably offset the entire cost as part of the revaluation, including the appraisal for the Seabrook nuclear power plant. And we've never completed appraisals in Hampton that I know of. We haven't since I've been here, of course, and I know they weren't done by the prior assessor. And I think it's a perfect opportunity to get this done. And to say it's a waste of money and the appraisals would have to be done in another five years is not completely correct. The body of the appraisal, the meat of the appraisal, which deals with gathering information as to company assets, um, is, is really the body of the appraisal. And that's the main part of why we want to do these. It takes months and months to gather this information. Once that information is gathered, we then analyzed income and, as income and asset information going forward that only needs to update income and financial figures and any changes to assets based on new additions to their utility uh, company. Um, the adjustment and asset changes are what gets updated and the cost is very minimal once the body of the appraisal is completed. So they can be used over and over, at least the, you know, at least the main body of the appraisal. Um, the basis of all appraisals must be built on the premise of fair market value. 
This is this is per the state constitution and the Department of Revenue Administration. However, as the DRA is assigned with the duty of administrating the statewide property tax under RSA 83F, they do complete appraisals, or I should say value opinions. They are not appraisals. Um, they use the unit method or net book value approach, um, which, by the way, are not developed based on the requirements of RSA 751. As a courtesy, the DRA offers communities the use of these values as an option, but towns are not required by law to use them. The fact these state utilities have little to no standing when it comes time to defend an appeal, and we have seen our fair share of those in recent years. As an example, and I won't take up a lot of your time, but I want to read two pages from a recent decision. PSNH versus 55 communities in the state. We were not one of them, but they lost their case. They based their value opinions on a unit method approach by a private uh, appraisal company, as well as um, using the state utility appraisal as a backup to support their opinion of value. Both the PSNH appraisal and the DRA appraisals, DRA appraisals were found to be unreliable by the BTLA and further ruled that those approaches have little to no basis as to the determination of fair market value. In fact, the BTLA clearly stated that the BTLA appraisals were not credible, credible in developing an opinion of fair market value. So I just want to read two things that were part of this decision, and I will um, leave it at that tonight. Um, the board finds, this is in the board's decision, the board finds there is only one market value opinion in each of the DRA appraisals, a number valuing all of the utility property owned by the taxpayer irrespective of where it is located, irrespective of where it's located. In other words, the portion of the total value assigned to each municipality in these appraisals is simply an arithmetic allocation based on historical costs, not the independent opinion of market value of a professional appraiser or assessor that can meaningful, meaningfully be used to corroborate or rebut the conclusions contained in the Tea Garden appraisal, which was the company PSNH hired. As the municipalities correctly argued, the requirements of RSA 729 are not met and the values allocated to each community are not true indicators of fair market value in any one taxing jurisdiction. And finally, um, the board ruled on the DRA appraisal as well. They state, Mr. Dickman, who is the utility appraiser, testified approximately 30 to 35 of the municipalities in New Hampshire use the values shown in the DRA appraisals for local ad valorem tax assessing purposes. To briefly summarize the process, once the DRA completes each annual utility appraisal, as it is statutorily charged to do, pursuant to RSA 83F, it provides a copy to the utility and publishes a list of the utility values on its website. As noted above, the DRA does not provide the actual utility appraisal report to any municipality, citing the confidentiality constraints in RSA 21J14. We've never been able to get an appraisal from the DRA without getting permission from the company, and we've never been able to get permission from the company. The board has concerns regarding whether use of a mere allocation calculation in an appraisal without any opportunity to examine, review, or verify the information contained within it, within it is sufficient to satisfy the selectman's obligation under RSA 751. The statute obligates the selectman to assess all taxable property at its fair market value. Market value means the property's full and true value, as the same would be appraised in payment of a just debt due from a solvent debtor. The selectman shall receive and consider all evidence that may be submitted to them relative to the value of the property the value which cannot be determined by personal examination. The board has written repeat, repeatedly on why the assessing process should be transparent and understandable to the taxpayers in each community. The authority to assess property has been delegated by the legislature to selectmen or assessors. This delegation entrusts this important function to a select few, regardless of whether those elected or appointed officials perform the function or is contracted to the private sector. Those who, ca those who carry out this function should document their analysis so that those who should shoulder the burden, which is the taxpayer, can understand the appraisal. So I would just like to close by saying 
then it clearly states it's our authority to assess all taxable property. So I would hope that you, as citizens of Hampton <coughs> and other citizens of Hampton, um, you know, approve and vote uh, yes on this warrant article. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tinker. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak to this warrant article? Yes, I'd like to make a comment about it. it we Sobedek. entered into a, uh, sorry, Norman Soberdick, 70 Todd Mill Rose, speaking for the Rational Taxpayers of Hampton. Um, we entered into a payment in lieu of taxes with Seabrook, and, or Next Air, or whatever the name is. And um, it seems to me that there is a portion of the $225,000 I'm not sure exactly how much, which is being used to uh, cover the cost of appraising Seabrook. So if we have a payment in lieu of taxes, which I believe goes for five years or thereabouts, I don't know the exact date, it seems that that allocation of money for that purpose is meaningless because whatever the appraisal is, you're stuck with the payment that the agreement that you made. And I think this... This particular warrant article ought to be reviewed again by the budget committee, to try and get into the depth of what the specifically what the two hundred twenty-five thousand is about and how much is being used for uh, Seabrook. If you've done it already and you're satisfied, that's fine. I'm not aware of that, but um, it just it just sits right out there saying uh, why spend money. Thank you, Mr. Silver. Jim Lord on 190 uh, Kings Highway, Hampton. Uh, I just want to say that, uh, just reiterate what Ed said. Ed sort of talks in uh, assessor's language, maybe they don't get it. The point about this reevaluation is just fair and equitable taxation. And it would seem to me that the rational taxpayers would want everybody taxed at the same level. And it's just simply saying to utilities, we're going to uh, uh, appraise you at fair market value, which they are not at this time. And it needs to be the same as you're paying on your household taxes as the utilities are paying. And you need to appraise them, you need to get it done, and I think Ed gave a good uh, explanation of that. So it's just fair and equitable taxes across the board. Article 25. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $174,475 for the cost of Hampton's contribution to 20 human service agencies in the seacoast in the amounts corresponding to the agency's request in the right hand column as follows. Follows a list of 20, uh, 20 of these that sums out into the 2015 funding request was 173,131. The 2016 request is 174,475. These 20 human service agencies shall each be required to give a written report at the end of the calendar year 2016 to the Board of Selectmen highlighting what funds were used for and what impact the funds have in assisting to achieve their goals and objectives. Majority vote required. This was voted to recommend by the Budget Committee by a vote of 13 0 0. Is there anyone wishing to speak to this foreign article? Seeing okay, none, I'll move on to Article 26. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. There seems to be an error in this uh, printing. The fiscal impact, sorry, Mary Louise. The fiscal impact is listed as based on 174,475. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong number. I am in error. It is I that is in error. Please oh my forgive God. me. <laughs> Please forgive me, Lord and Lord. Sure. Sorry, Kim. Is that recording? At least he's down by Mr. Dean for the lightning strike. <laughs> Moving on to Article 26. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $115,350 for the purpose of purchasing the following items of equipment for the Recreation and Parks Department? One, a one-ton dump truck for Recreation Department to replace its current 1999 one-ton one -ton dump truck, which shall be traded in as a part of the purchase if deemed to be prudent by the Recreation and Parks Department Director, Town Manager, and the Board of Selectmen. Two, new playground equipment to replace obsolete playground equipment at Five Corners Park. 
always determined by the Board of Selectmen, the Town Manager, and the Director of Recreation and Parks Department. And three, to authorize the withdrawal of $115,350 from the Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund established for the purpose under Article 44 of the 2007 Annual Town Meeting. Majority vote required. So the Budget Committee recommended to uh, voted to recommend this warrant article by a vote of 10 to 0. Anyone wishing to speak to this warrant article? Shall the Town of Hanover vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $90,000 to carry out all lawful functions allowed under federal, state, and local criminal justice forfeiture programs and to authorize the withdrawal of that amount from the Police Forfeiture Special Revenue Fund created for that purpose under Article 35 of the 2003 Town Meeting. Majority vote required. On this one, the Police Forfeiture Fund it was voted to recommend by the Budget Committee unanimously by a vote of 13-0-0. Anyone wishing to speak to this warrant article? I see none. We can move on to Article 28. Article 28, ma'am? Yes, please. I've been asked by... Mrs. Woolsey to, to indicate the no tax impact on those previous two. Okay. Moving on to Article 28. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $45,365 to bring the Fire Prevention Secretary position to a 40 hour per week full time status. This shall be a non lapsing appropriation per RSA 3276 and shall not lapse until the hiring is complete or by March 31, 2017, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required. Tells me it was 11 to 0. <coughs> In favor. Two, two, two. 11 to 0. Sounds about right. Well, it could be an error again, too. <coughs> Sorry, Mary Louise. My memory is that it was 11 to 0 in favor, but my memory could be an error again. through our notes for a tangible vote on that we may not have one in which case we will have to re-vote it because you're not you're, you have it but you're not sure and i don't have it in any of my notes we voted i know we voted it we voted it uh, madam chair and i was one of the two votes in the negative okay now since the previous one was a 13 vote i assume that it would have been 11 to 0. I but i have to reconsider on this this would have been Reconsider for to last night. On what basis? Hmm? Th take a revote. That's all. I, I just think to clear it up so it's not money. We'll take a revote on it. Please, this committee. We tabled it, we tabled it originally to Wednesday, and I don't remember a revote on it last night. No, there wasn't any reconsideration last night. Right. No. Okay. The so, fire prevention secretary. Right. was one of those warrant articles that was forgotten in the mainstream of warrant articles brought to us, as you recall. Well, it was it brought to us, it was brought to us, we addressed that first in the evening, I thought. It might be in the minutes. Here. It was not ever tabled. Okay. It was brought up late because it wasn't brought to us in the, in the, in the initial batches of warrant articles. We've had lengthy discussion on it, but I just think that perhaps a revote will clear the air on this one. I'm happy to enjoy another lengthy discussion if the man wishes. <laughs> well, I think in fairness to the article, some discussion is warranted. If I can have, Norm, if you can give us a couple of minutes, I think we need to do a, a vote, a period on this, not a re-vote. Um, can I have a, a motion? I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. Yes. Second. Can read the, can read the warrant, oh, the warrant has been written, read. To accept as written. Yeah. Okay. To accept as written. All right. Yeah. Now I'll open it up for discussion. If we can have not a lengthy but 
a concise discussion, it would help. Well, Madam Chair, as you recall, uh, when this was brought up, we had the fire chief uh, available mm -hmm. to answer questions, and that questioning period was, was truncated. Um, by a desire to speed up the clock or whatever. And now we're asking essentially the same thing, only without the chief available to answer. No. What's he here? Right right there. There. He's, He's right not here. at the microphone, that's my point. And now I'm told even before we begin that we have to be brief rather than uh, comprehensive. You're making it even longer, Tim. That's correct, because I object to the process on this particular warrant article. Well, as you know, in previous budget committee meetings, I was perhaps the most vocal in support of this uh, warrant article. New information was coming to light for me, which was causing questions in my mind, which I was not able to pursue. And based on your decision to do it quickly tonight, indicates that I'm not going to be able to pursue it as well. So I will remain in opposition because I cannot get a full oh, hearing true. on my questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Tim, we've given you the floor to ask the questions. We've just asked that to make it as brief as possible. So in fairness... That was as brief as I could make it, Madam Chair. Okay. Any other questions here on the table? All right, so we'll vote by roll, starting with you, Nick. Um, all no, I mean, I, I do have... Uh, some facts I would relate if you want discussion. If you just well, want to ask for discussion before okay. we take the vote, Jerry. Okay. Right. This um, uh, warrant article uh, really bothered me a lot. Um, we we have a request for a full-time fire prevention secretary. Currently, this uh, lady is doing a fine job. Works uh, 20 hours a week. Uh, and makes $14.46 an hour for about 15000 a year. She, uh, she's organized. She's, she's really pulled the department administratively in line in terms of scheduling these, uh, these inspections, these fire inspections, and she's made them more efficient. She's done a wonderful job. They want to make her full-time. Full-time can bring her... bring her... Uh, if the CBAs pass to uh, up to 36067 for annual salary. This is a 19% increase in her current salary. And when you put the fringe benefits on it, it brings her up to $60,000, 60485 63 if the CBA passes. She would have an immediate 19% raise in the annual salary. But lumped in with that would be a 24,000 increase in 24,289 increase in fringe benefits, driven by retirement and health. Health insurance would be 16,000 and retirement would be 44,000 out of the 24,000. You know, I don't get it. I can see moving her hours from 20 to 25, 26, 27 below the threshold before she's considered full time making the department even more efficient, more streamlined, more organized. But I can't see moving her to $60,000 from 15. These fringe benefits just do it. Making full-time employees just further burden the taxpayers in terms of retirement and health costs, which are increasingly a bigger percentage in the, in the town budget. This is a black-white decision as far as I'm concerned. It's an easy one. But it was raised, and the majority of the board here, uh, budget committee voted for it. I voted against it. I'm extremely against it. I, I just, I just can't see it. For that extra 20 hours, for that extra 20 hours, she's currently working 20. For that extra 20 hours, we're going to get, we're going to have to pay 45,448. 45,448 for that extra 20 hours. I hate to tell you how much that amounts to per hour. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chairman, I also voted against this, and I'd like to add that. Um, well, the problem, you guys spoke against it, but we didn't have a final vote against it, so please correct yourself. I voted against it. Thank you. And I would like to speak against it again. Grab the mic down there. Grab the mic down there. Here you, Michael. I have one right here. Is it working? Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Got me yell a little louder? <laughs> no, uh, I voted against it. Not so, I mean, Jerry made some very good points and I've endorsed everything he says. My problem with this is, if she's done such a wonderful job, everything's going so smoothly, 
why are we changing it? I mean, if my car is driving wonderful and it doesn't cost me anything to run it, why should I buy a new one just because I want a new car? I don't. I can't see this. This is a ridiculous amount of money to, and I don't want to see what purpose it serves. So I, I'm definitely against it. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I would like to have the Chief give a brief uh, monologue of what he did at the budget session when this was discussed. And I thought voted on. I thought I had voted on it. Um, so if, you know, if we could just have him give a quick uh, idea as to... If you were to. Certainly. Thank, Thank you. you. The position of fire prevention secretary is one in which we are, that's our business office for, for the fire department. Uh, she sits out front at the window right now. We're there, uh, we, we currently work um, all day long. You know the fire department's open 24 seven. The position, as far as business is concerned, is open eight to five. Uh, currently my window's unstaffed half the time. Her position is to take in all of the work that's coming in, whether it's builders or uh, other construction. It may be uh, for the permits or uh, permitting for propane, for uh, scheduling inspections, whether it's sprinkler or fire alarm. Uh, she currently is also on a task to re reevaluate and update our site plans. As you might imagine, businesses change quite frequently. She's been sending out letters to local businesses to obtain information so that we have current information. Um, there's the Knox box logging. There's an, an, an intensive amount of work that goes into her position. Currently at 20 hours a week, she has done a really tremendous job. One thing that I would like to separate though is that the position requires somebody there all the time. That I already have a wonderful per person performing it is separate. That's a bonus to me. However, for 20 hours a week, we have an unstaffed position. <coughs> Nobody can greet any of our vendors that are coming to the door. Um, her job has increased dramatically. She has done a tremendous job. I cannot get away from that. Um, and I champion her cause because of it. However, we're not done yet. What we've done is we've made a really bad situation better. We haven't completed the work that we need to yet to make the town proper. As I've discussed with Mr. Tinker this week, in the last four years, I was hired in March of 2012. My four year anniversary is coming, and in that time we've seen an increase of $107 million worth of property that we're protecting. All of this requires inspections, all of it requires uh, scheduling, site updates. She's the one who's doing that right now. So we really need this position to move forward so that we can continue on the path that the town's on. Thank you. Madam, Madam Chair, may I just ask the Chief a question? Yes, yeah. Okay. So, in other words, just so I have it clear, and I think perhaps the budget committee has it clear as well, if this particular person was not employed 20 hours a week, you would still be looking to have a position at 40 hours? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I have a question, Madam Chair. Um, the revenue brought in by the, the permits that this position deals with? Yes. Can you, can you um, explain the revenue that was brought into this department uh, this year? Sure. Uh, in January, actually in December, uh, at the town manager's request, we evaluated the permit um, costs and fees that were associated with fire prevention. Uh, in general, we were we were not on the map by comparison to local communities um, like sized. Uh, we did some research, we generated fees, and at the Board of Selectmen's um, direction and vote, we adopted the new fees on February 12th. Uh, the fee schedule went in, in effect on February 12th. From January 1st to February 12th of 2015, we brought in $495. And since February 12th, with the acquisition of the new fee schedule, we brought in uh, just under $21,000 in new fees that were generated. And she's been the, the catalog for all of this right now. Okay. Um, so these are fees that haven't been there in the years past. And I'm not, I'm not saying that this woman in particular is the cause of those fees coming in. It sounds like it was something at the Board of Selectmen um, approved to bring these fees. What it does show is the workload um, that this job requires, though. Certainly. And uh, especially not having, I know you went out for a fire inspector this year, and, and that was uh, uh, tabled for, for, uh, by the Board of Selectmen, but um, 
having worked on the beach, especially in the seasonal department, there is a huge need to get inspections and yeah. permits out done in a timely manner. Um, th this position for consideration of the board, from what I understood from your presentation, deals with the scheduling of that. And right now, where we don't have two people doing inspections, we have the chief and the deputy chief taking on that, uh, augmenting the, the fire prevention officer, uh, which takes them away from their duties too. And, and uh, uh, to have her schedule that for you and make it, it, it gives you the opportunity as best you can to get back to your duties and it really seems like she's um, streamlining the process, making it more efficient. Um, I can definitely see the need for a full-time position. I would be in support of this Warren article. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. The other night when we talked about this, I mentioned that you run a very lean, well-managed, department there are eight firemen on duty 24 hours a day protecting us and you explained the other day that this position allows the fire prevention officer yourself and the deputy oh, no way. to you're not doing the schedule she's doing it for you correct and it makes your department very efficient Considering the growth that this town has had with not just at the beach, look at the Smutty Nose Brewery. You have an, a tremendous job that you have to do. And this person is getting $14.50 an hour. And from the, the descriptions that you've given us, she does an excellent job. It certainly sounds like you've found the right person to do the job. Couldn't agree and more. if you are asking for one to add 20 hours, you're not asking for three or four more firemen. You're running a very lean operation. I am completely for this article. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Comment. Mr. Right, the, the uh, pay that this lady would now be making with the CBA would be 1734. If that passes. If it passes. And I would be looking for ways to streamline this in terms of, I would add another part-time person. If you're gonna do 220 hours, it's equal to 40. Or put her up to a 27 or 28 and get one for 13, you know. Find ways to operate efficiently, effectively, and cost-effectively is what I, where I'm coming from. Thank you. Um, I feel this is a very cost effective. Um, this person is much needed, is one of the first people that when they go to the fire department, this is who they're going to see. Um, this position helps the fire department immensely and much more than we'll ever understand. So I am very much in favor of this. Thank you, sir. Take a vote. Madam Chair? Yes. The question before us in this Warren article is whether this position should exist as a full-time as opposed mm -hmm. to a part-time. The question is not whether the position should exist at all. Also, Chief, you would, you would tend to agree with me that if we had doubled our fees, we would have doubled our revenue, right? And if we had cut in half our fees, we would have cut in half our revenues. But we would have had the same amount of work to do, right? We would. Okay, so revenues have got nothing to do with, uh, with the question before us. Mm -hmm. Also, Chief, I'm sure you would agree, because you've said so in other forums, that this particular person that was hired in this position this past year has achieved a great degree of efficiencies for your department. Is that correct? I have said that, and I agree. Yeah, and, and, and she's done so with uh, largely uh, organizational skills, which included uh, a deeper utilization of, of readily available computer technology, correct? She has. So with all of that efficiency, it certainly uh, would, would certainly uh, accommodate any additional volume in terms of buildings that might be uh, built in the town. I disagree. Um, well, I haven't seen any, any indication as to what percentage of efficiency increase we've got, nor uh, number of building inspections that are occurring uh, increased over year over year. So I don't have any of that data. Generally uh, speaking, and, and to speak to the Warren article on that, though, to answer you, Mr. Jones, uh, I give quarterly reports to the Board of Selectmen, and I indicate the volume of the workload that we perform. 
Uh, gen, you know, it, with without question, each quarter I come to them and I talk about the fire department statistics, the EMS side, and I also talk about fire prevention. Um, and the volume is tremendous. As far as volume of work, I know that my counterpart in business, Mr. Schultz, the building inspector, I'm sorry, building, um, the building inspector, I know that he has $40 million worth of permitted work. All of that needs inspection. So if we don't allow this person to, to maintain the job that they're doing and, and grow, then we're unable to grow as well. It's that simple. We have a lot of work and we have a lot more to go. <laughs> Well, as I was saying, I don't have any, any, any data that indicates to me a percentage of increase in the degree of efficiency that's been realized in the past year, although it has been lauded, and I certainly applaud it, and I expect it has been an increase, but I have no idea how to measure that increase in efficiency. I also am, am a bit uh, dearth in terms of data, in terms of uh, the percentage of increases in, in uh, permitting, especially given your previous testimony that the permitting has been distributed over a larger county time frame. At least that's what you said at the last meeting. What I talked about so, was permit yeah, so we, we don't we can't see that peak we, in, we cannot see that peak and valley in terms of uh, any kind of numbers. Uh, I, I, this is not readily available. I don't know what the me. question is, Mr. Jones. I know it's not a question yet, it's okay. a statement. Also well, I think that this person, in all indications I have, this person that you just hired has made radical improvements in, in the department. I would be far more in favor of doubling her pay than doubling the amount of hours that she's working. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I'm going to take the opportunity just to apologize for the confusion on this. This Lauren article came in, I believe, late. Friday. And that's right, Friday, and um, with another warrant article number on it. It was sharing another warrant article number. So we've had some confusion getting things very late and numbered incorrectly. So thus the, the clarity in the vote, because we had two warrant articles with the same numbers. Um, on this, I'm, I'm not going to regurgitate everything. I'm going to say this. For the past few years, we have needed another fire inspector. Um, this is the next best thing to it. And the numbers that have been brandished in the past for a fire inspector, they were almost double what you're seeing here when you added benefits in, into it. And this is helping to accomplish great gains in the inspections, albeit the chief I believe you're doing them, but she is keeping up with all the paperwork on her Just end. so we're clear, ma'am, the fire prevention officer is handling the, the lion's share, mm -hmm. and the deputy and I are doing as, as needed where we're um, fitting in. How was that? She, he, we still have a fire prevention officer doing the inspections. I don't want to take away from the work he's doing. He's doing a tremendous job. Mm -hmm. And my question would be, would this team be effective in the future, or would we still need to enhance it? With her enhancement, you yeah, discuss it? With, with, with moving her forward. moving in the team with the three of you right now, will that be effective going into the future or will we be looking at another personnel request in fire prevention? Uh, the trajectory that the town's growing, I anticipate we're, we're still without that position of inspector. So, it, so it's still, still there are three people doing inspections to answer that question. There are three people currently doing inspections and that includes the deputy. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I'm going to leave this for a vote. Nick, if we can start down your end. Bridal. Blair. Kravitz. Lappin. LaBranch. Plump. Malarqua. Vlad. Nicholson, yes. Are we all the way down the end of the table? Oh, yes, Bean. Thank you. In the apartment. I'm going to add myself to that. Latimer. And the no votes? Pierce. Sonoy. Jones. Any abstentions? All right. The vote to recommend is given as follows. 11 to 3? Yes. Thank you very much. No, no. That was wrong. Now moving on to Article 29. Article 29. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise an appropriate sum of $29,487 for 
over replacing, upgrading, or modifying an existing computer system operated by the IT division under the finance department and authorize the withdrawal of 29487 from the Management Information Systems Capital Reserve Fund created for that purpose by Article 27 of the 1997 Town Meeting. And to vote after the foregoing withdrawal of sum of 29487 is made to discontinue the said Management Information Systems Capital Reserve Fund with the balance of said funds with accumulated interest to date of withdrawal to be transferred to the general fund. Majority vote required. Thank you. Can confirm the last night's vote with Nick and Tim. Can hear. Can confirm the vote with Nick and Tim on last night's vote. Let's roll an article. I don't have my notes tonight, Madam Chair. Brian, do you have I have seven to five, yes. I have seven, seven to five. five. Seven, seven to five. five. I have the exact opposite. We voted to not approve seven right. to five. Right. It's definitely against. Yeah. Two to five to seven. Yeah. Seven yeah. Seven it was against. It was five to seven. Yeah. Five yeah. Seven. Yeah. Remember, we yeah. voted five not seven to approve, five, and that's why I was seven seven questioning that. Yeah. Okay. We also voted, Madam Chair, to uh, by the same number to request the Board of Selectmen to consider removing this uh, article. Yeah, yeah, this is a footnote. Well, we'll wait on that one. So this vote was not to recommend by a vote of five, seven, zero. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this article? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to article 30. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be placed in the Hampton Conservation Fund. This fund is to use to acquire, maintain, improve, protect, or limit the future use of, or otherwise conserve and properly utilize open spaces and conservation easements in Hampton according, in accordance with RSA 36A, sections one through four inclusive. Recent acquisitions, such as the Bachelor Farm Conservation Easement, have significantly reduced the size of the fund. The goal is to return the fund to adequate levels to enable the commission to conserve additional lands on behalf of the town of Hampton. The conservation fund contains previously approved appropriations or gifts for the same or similar purposes that have been made to the Conservation Commission Accumulation Fund, the Conservation Land Fund, and the Conservation Land Acquisition Fund. Majority vote required. We vote in favor of this, I know we do. Take a revote if you want. Yeah, I have seven four one. Do you have confirmation on that? I know we voted in favor of it. I didn't mm -hmm. keep score. If you want to take a revote, we can do that. Ridiculous. I, 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 I do not object to the seven four not one count. I do not object to the seven four one count. Do you agree? Okay, so you agree with the seven four one? I can either confirm or deny, but I don't object to it. Okay. Madam Chair, a point of order, please. Mm -hmm. When we uh, voted on Article 28, I think we failed to open it up for public comment. Yes, we did. We did. No, I don't think so. No. That, was that where the secretary went? All right, just to go back over that, on Article 28, was there anyone who wished you know, to speak? the purpose of the public hearing, bless your hearts, is so people can hear. Yeah. Thank you, Mary Louise. Really? Really? Were you able to hear me, Mary Louise? We're doing the best yeah. we can. No, it's good. Right. I'm not on I'm, I'm making a point right. that after we took the discussion and vote on Article 28, yes. that we forgot to open it up for public comment. Mm -hmm. And even though I was voting against it, it's still questions right. the legality of that vote if we don't open it for public comment. To clarify that, is there anyone here who would wish to speak on Article 28? No? Seeing none. We will now move on. Thank you, Madam Chair. I could not hear the vote on Article, on article 30. On Article 30, we are showing a vote of 741. Okay, thank you. Okay. This meeting, so that everybody knows, went until almost 12 o'clock last night. So minutes have not been produced yet. So we're going by our notes here and we're confirming it. So we've taken votes where we're fuzzy. So you have to bear with us. But we're trying to comply with dates and give fairness to things that came in very, very late to us, misnumbered, doubly numbered. And we're trying to make this so there's absolutely no confusion for anybody going forward on what our vote is. 
So again, I, uh, I apologize. On one hand and on the other hand, I ask you to bear with us <coughs> so there is no confusion. On Article 30, I have a vote of 741. We have the entire committee here. We can revote this for clarity or we can accept this as is. If it's fuzzy, I think we can revote it. If it's fuzzy, we can revote it. Yeah, it's it's not not okay, it's not fuzzy. So fine. All right, fine. Okay. So this was or an Article 30 for the Conservation Fund was recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 741 that has been accepted. Fine. Does anybody wish to speak on this or an article? Okay, seeing none, I will move on, excuse me, to Article 31. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $5,000, said sum of $5,000 to come from the unassigned fund balance, a fund containing unexpended appropriation from prior years as of December 31st, 2015, and with no amount to be raised from taxation, to provide partial funding for the planning of a town war memorial dedicated to the town's <coughs> sons and daughters who have served in the militia for the protection of the community in colonial wars from 1638 to 1774, and who have fought in wars for our nation from 1775 to date, and to provide appropriate space on such memorial, on such memorial for those who have or shall serve in future wars. The Board of Selectmen to work with the Hampton Post 35 of the American Legion and such individuals as the Board of Selectmen shall appoint to plan the memorial and its place of erection on parcel of town or land and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept, and expend for such purpose. Any funds from the state of New Hampshire, the federal government, or any private source as may become available to add to the sum. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation for, for RSA 3276 and will not lapse until the project is completed or by March 31st, 2019, whichever is soon. Majority vote required. On this, I want to thank the selectmen for the rewording and working with this one in the 11th hour. This was recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 12 to 1. Is there anyone who would like to speak to this article? Seeing none, we will move on to Article 30, 30, 32. Running out of articles. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to distribute to the general fund all funds who are the left of the Heritage Fund, currently amounted to approximately $5,329.58, plus any additional interest earned thereon from past monies appropriated and gifts of money, which are no longer needed due to the abolition of the Heritage Commission as a result of the passage of Article 35 of the 2015 Annual Town Meeting. Majority vote required. This was recommended unanimously by the Budget Committee, vote of 13 -0 -0. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to this? Seeing none, we'll move on. I think the, the others are non non money. Yeah. No, there's a, I know there's you get the a parade, parade next, yeah. yeah. Not parade. Where is the parade? Praise 43. Praise 43. Oh, wait a minute, the yeah. cable TV was yeah. right. 43. 34 next time, Jim? Yeah, there's a cable TV on 34. That's money on 34. Okay. 34. Oh, 34? Yeah, cable TV. Percentage. Once you get 34. Yeah, they're, they're going from... No. no. Uh, did we vote on it the first night? Or we have it in minutes? We can take a vote. We take another vote. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry, Jamie, if you no don't read that article for us. Sure, we have to. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to change the percentage distribution of the franchise fees reserved from the cable TV provider as voted under Article 16 of the 2013 Annual Town Meeting so that 40% instead of 25% of the funds received from the franchise fees are placed into the Hampton Cable TV local revolving fund and are allowed to accumulate from year to year and shall not be considered to be part of the town's unassigned fund balance in accordance with provisions of RSA 3195H as previously voted. The balance of the franchise fees received by the town of the cable TV franchise agreement are to be deposited as a revenue in the general fund to reduce taxes. Majority vote required. 
Okay. I'm going to take the lead on this one for just a minute to try to simplify this. We did go over this last week, but we didn't take a vote because we sent it back to the Board of Selectmen requesting that they consider rewording that, which is something the Budget Committee is not able to do. And instead of 40% request, 100% be on that. Um, I do not believe it was taken up um, by the Board of Selectmen Monday night. So this Warren article stays as it is written, increasing from 240 from 25%, and right now that is the only option. We don't have the ability to change this Warren article. So I would ask... Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> we did vote on it. Um, what do you have as vote? Well, we did vote on it, because you may recall, everyone enjoyed great laughter when I argued the problem with this one article and then voted in abstention. So we clearly voted. I'm sure you all remember that belly laugh you all got. We don't have anything here, Tim. Right. We, have to vote we were now. voted. No, I did not. Okay. I know there was one abstention, and that was me. Yeah, we don't have time to go back, so for the sake of clarity on it, we're going to ask for a vote on this. Then we're going to have a discussion again? We're going to have a discussion again. Can I have a motion for a vote on this first of all? I'll, I'll make a motion. I'll second it. As written. Yeah. Jerry second? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Discussion? Madam Chair, I'll just summarize what I said the other night. Um, what a selectman are taking action in the correct direction. And I, and I appreciate that they're moving in the, in the right direction with this Warren article. The problem really arises from 1999 to 2000, there was a Warren article passed to put 100% of the franchise fees into the cable TV fund. But just a few years ago, when a certain citizen went to the Board of Selectmen prior to the meeting beginning, before the cameras started rolling, and putting out to them that their behavior was inconsistent with that law, and they were only spending about 30% of the time, that citizen was then told by the selectmen who were no longer present on the board that they would have to fix it. They subsequently fixed it by not changing their behavior to conform with the law, but rather changing the Warren article to conform with their behavior. Subsequently, that vote was passed that the uh, urging of the selectmen, of course, and now it's only 25%, I believe the number is presently, that's going into the cable TV fund. The other 75% is, an, in effect, a sales tax. A sales tax is when you tax something at a retail transaction and place that revenue into the general fund. And that is exactly what 75% of this alleged franchise fee is, is a sales tax. This particular Warren article seeks to reduce that abusive sales tax from 75% to 60%, and that is moving in the right direction. A couple of selectmen actually indicated that it, that it wasn't exactly the most uh, palatable vote to take. In fact, selectman Waddle flat out said it was wrong. And selectman Waddle's right, in my opinion. It's wrong to be putting a sales tax in New Hampshire, even if it is legal. That is, in fact, what's going on here. And the argument that was being made was that perhaps the selectmen ought to reconsider wording on this, especially now given that his, what has taken place since that vote was, of course, the outage in, in the uh, cable TV that you've all experienced in the past week. In my opinion, that, that outage that we've been experiencing is a result of a lack of funding and that lack of funding is a result of the fact that we're only putting in 20% of the fees into the cable TV fund. Three years ago, there was, for a brief time, a selectman's IT committee, in which there was a similar outage at that time. And that IT committee strongly recommended, fought for behind the scenes, silently, you know, almost no one except those who were fighting against it know about, that we urged them to every critical piece of equipment in that room have redundant backup. We did secure that redundant backup eventually, but when SAU 90 put forth a very good argument that they should have uh, their, their own channel, that the, and the cable TV recommended that, that they give them their backup equipment for this particular device that failed, they also recommended that they buy another piece of replacement equipment. 
Now, the selectmen chose not to buy that replacement piece of equipment. And I believe the reason they did was because they were trying to save the fund from going too low in its dollar amount. The risk of it going too low was, in fact, a risk that was realized because we weren't putting 100% of the fees into the fund. And that is why, uh, well, I think moving from 25% into the fund to 40% of the fund is an improvement. It's still, as Selectman Wall said, wrong to not put it all in. Well, he didn't say not put it all in, but I'm adding that piece. Because otherwise, it's a sales tax. And so that's why the, our argumentation at the Budget Committee was that the selectmen reconsider this and, and make it 100%. I don't believe we actually voted on that. We did vote on the warrant as it stood, and I abstained, and you all enjoyed a good ballot after that. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. All right. Right. Yeah, the real answer here, and we can't do it with this warrant article, is to just take from the people what we really need to run the PEG channel. That's public education and government. You know, whatever it is, if it's 100000 or 150000 that's what the fee should recommend. Nothing should go into general revenue. Can't do it with this article. We have to take a step first uh, forward, I think, with this article. But next year, there should be another article here to get this whole thing calibrated and straightened out. And if it takes uh, uh, Comcast a, a year or two or three to uh, recognize uh, uh, the uh, change in, in their contract, fine. They can sidebar it. Meantime, they should only take what we need. If it's 2% instead of 4 take 2% instead of 4 Tim's right with his tax. Uh, 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 applicability. Thank you. Okay, we all set for a vote now. <coughs> Roll call down the end of the table, starting with Nick. Bridal in the affirmative. Blair. Pierce. <coughs> uh, Roberts. Zanoy. Lapham. Latimer. LaBranch. Clough. Olock. Flair. <coughs> B. To the negative. All those opposed? Abstentions. Nickerson. Jones. Opposed. Abstention. If you need a favor, no disfavor this. Cindy, did you say negative? No, abstention. No, no, no. no. Negative. No. In negative. Negative. Okay. One negative. So I have a vote of 12, 1, 1. Right. This article will be recommended in ballot. As recommended, as recommended by the budget committee. Right. Thank you for the clarity. Does anybody want to speak on this warrant article? Jim. Jim, excuse me. Jim Waddell, not Waddell. <laughs> oh. It's okay, Jim. Forgive me, Jim. I keep doing that, and I don't intend to, and I apologize. <laughs> I, just, I just want to say just very quickly that <clears throat> The Channel 22 does such a great job, and that they really would need that extra money with the extra channel. So I really hope people support this. And I do support next year coming back with a, a different Warren article to change how this whole Thank funding you. is taking place, because it is a tax on people. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have town council in the room. Can I ask a, a legal question? Would it be correct at deliberative? To change the percentage. I know we can change dollars, but does the percentage change the intent? No. Uh, that's uh, a good question. That 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 question is always of interest. That's why and I'm asking you. And you get a you. different you get get a different interpretation depending on what it does. If you change the percentage to something that eliminates the uh, what's going on. Uh, that could probably be deemed a, a significant uh, reversal and therefore would not be um, valid. And we'll the moderator would probably rule that out of order. If you, ch if you differ with the percentage a little bit to go up, that's something else again. It really depends on what the amendment would be. So something that would not necessarily change the war article, just adjust a number. Right. Well, if you made it 
suggesting a number. In other words, small and nothing yeah, might be bounced out, but changing Correct. number or percentage may be acceptable. Just a question. I'm not going to open it, that it's up. It's more likely right to now. be found to be valid. I just thought while you were accessible to us, sure. I would ask you that question. Thank Madam you very Madam much for that. Madam Chair, if I may ask the town attorney. Sure. Because uh, I do intend on making the motion at the leader session. Uh, so what I'm hearing from you is that a motion such as changing it to 99.99% would be quite sufficient, but 100% might be too extreme. No, it's, it's, it's a matter of judgment, and really you'd want to... Check uh, with the moderator in advance, think about basically. It. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good point. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you very much. Sure, thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this board? Let me just make a quick, quick comment. Uh, no, oh, to the public. Okay. Yeah, we're back. We already voted. All right. Okay. Moving on to the next Warren article. All right. Article 43, I think, is the next money article, man. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All set. All set. On the petition of John Nyan and at least 25 Hampton registered voters, shall the town of Hampton raise and appropriate $3,000 to pay for the experience Hampton Inc organizer of the 2010 to 2015 Hampton Christmas Parades to help defray the expenses of the 2016 Christmas Parade and related activities. Majority vote required. I will also make a note that there is a Scribner's error here found in the fiscal note which will be repaired showing the $2 million yeah. article would make for a great parade but it is an error that will be repaired. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that John would appreciate I'm that. Sure that would. I'm not sure the taxpayers would. We have one heck of a parade I'll tell you. Um, oh, right. my God. So I'll circle that and look for that to be corrected. It'll have to be, yeah. yeah. And thank you to Mr. Bridal All for right. pointing that out. I will tell you that this past budget committee um, unanimously yeah. by a vote of 13 0, 0 Is there anyone who would like to speak to this petition warrant article? Madam Chair, Madam Chair, when we voted for this warrant article, there was no fiscal impact statement, as was true with most of the one articles that we voted on. Right. So this $2 million error could not have been caught by us. Um, okay. But in fact, we were voting on more articles that didn't campaign fiscal impact. Right. Which just raises another question in my mind. Was our previous votes valid on all the other ones or not? <laughs> Given that they're now coming in with fiscal this impact, so that's changed. Quite honestly. Yes, for those who have dealt with this, this is a problem. We give it things very, very late. Mm -hmm. um, probably the latest I've ever seen, but I'll move on from that. Uh, going on to the last, the last believe, Warren article. Thank you. 44. On the petition of Amy Hansen and at least 25 other registered voters in the town of Hampton, shall the town of Hampton raise and appropriate the amount of 35000 to help defray the cost of carrying out repairs and maintenance to the town clock. Such funds raised by this article to be used along with privately raised funds that are and currently in the town's possession to complete the work of constructing a tower to house the clock and for the clock's repair, installation, and in that structure. This shall be a non-lapsing account for RSA 3276 and will not lapse until after the earlier of one, all funds raised by this article being expended for the construction, repair, and maintenance of the the tower and clock for two, December 31st, 2021. Majority vote required. Thank you. The vote by the budget committee was to not recommend this warrant article by a vote of 561. Is there anybody wishing to speak to this warrant article? Yes, Madam Chair, it saddens me that you uh, you decided to, to uh, not support this article. Uh, last year, the clock committee had a Warren article to raise. I believe it was seventy-five or hundred thousand dollars. It did seventy-five. That did not pass. That committee has worked very hard over the past year. They have secured the space for it at the uh, center school. They have raised approximately one hundred thousand dollars in the past year or two years. Uh, this is a gift that was given to this town almost, I think, over 100 years ago. Uh, they have it restored. They needed about $36,000 more to finish the clock to, from the clockmaker. They, they felt that when they had the money for the, the $100,000, they were, they were very close. Then they got the rest of the, um, the bill back from the clockmaker. 
and due to making sure that it was working properly, there's only two people in the whole uh, New England, New York area that will actually even work on these. Uh, it's a very small people that you can, and it was $36,000. I think they've done an excellent job raising money for this. All they are asking for is, is for the town to raise this $36,000 to bring back a clock, which I saw a, a, um, a thing on social media just uh, the other day that said somebody missed hearing the, and seeing the old clock. It's a great place to go. I can remember as a kid listening to the bell, knowing that when it chimed so many times I had to be home. I'm sure there are other kids or people that remember that. It needs to be replaced. And I would urge you to reconsider your vote on this and please support the article. Thank you. Thank you, Selectman Bridal. Is there anyone else wishing to speak to this Warren article? I was speaking as a citizen, not a selected citizen. Well, I, I was just honoring your position as an elected official, even Thank though you. you're speaking as a resident, but we'll make note of that. Mary Louise would say, we can put a plastic bag, a paper bag over our head sometimes, but it doesn't change who we have. <laughs> Full note. Um, I see no one else wishing to speak to this Warren article. So Madam that being said. Madam Chair, I move to close the public hearing. Okay, the time. Second. I can't see the clock. At the current time, which is? 10 past 9. 11. 9, 11. 9 11. So this public hearing is closed at 9 11. If the budget committee would remain so that we can entertain any re votes. Also, Madam Chair, I have uh, motions for reconsideration. Okay, just hold on one minute, Tim. Let's give ourselves a break. Five minutes. Would you please tell me that we need to sign? Are we on break, Madam Chair? Yes. That's right. Are we on break? We're not on break. I just want to recollect before we get into further stuff. We're in pause. Take a five minute break. But I want to point out that before you leave tonight, Everybody on this committee needs to sign the school warrants. In triplicate. The town warrants are not available. So well, it's gotta go I would take a five minute break and pass it on now. In triplicate. Same pin. We are on break. Black. We are on break. Uh, Steve, it's in triplicate, Steve. Everyone has got to be signed. <laughs> Everybody. For anybody who missed signing the MS form for the schools, we're missing a couple of signatures on those, so if you haven't signed them, please put your hand up and Jerry would be happy to give them to you. As far as the MS forms for the town, they are not done. Um, they need to go up to um, PRA and then they should be back next week. Perhaps, um, and individually, we will have to go in and sign them. All right. So please make sure that you do. I'll send a memo out when they are back. All right. We'll send a memo out to everyone when we are back. All right. We are now part of the meeting on reconsidering votes previously taken. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I have motions to reconsider. And just for uh, Mr. Pierce's identification, I voted in the majority on each of those that I'm about to speak for uh, move for reconsideration. And I will and add that each of them have had made public comment on this evening. The first one that I move uh, to reconsider is Article 24. And for those who don't have the paper in front of me, in front of you, that's the. Uh, Article for uh, utility. Utility. utility revaluation. 
I'll second your motion. Seconded by Sandy. No. Um, well, no. <laughs> Any discussion on this Warren article? I'll speak to why I voted against it. Yeah, I had problems with this uh, a little bit. <clears throat> the warrant article itself, as I recall, is 225,000. Mm -hmm. Approximately 100,000 of that is Seabrook. We've got a uh, payment in lieu of taxes for five years. No matter what assessment we make, it's not going to affect us one bit tax wise. Uh, so I was in favor of uh, waiting until. Uh, the payment in lieu of taxes is over five years or whatever and then go and catch it every five years we have to do reassessment or an assessment and catch it at that time doesn't make sense for us to spend about a hundred thousand on something we can't do anything with right now okay. other than the bottom, Madam Chair. I'm sorry we'll 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 finish. No, let him finish Madam Chair, the motion was to reconsider, not to argue the Well, no, there was a discussion. The discussion. Before you discuss it. So I felt that, uh, again, when about half of this warrant article was for. Jerry, Sandy makes the point. We have to vote to reconsider before oh, we discuss oh. it. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry. I, I yield. We're, we're getting tired up here. All right. You're right, we do have to take a vote to reconsider before we can discuss. Yes. All right, so all those in favor of reconsideration. Anybody Start here? down by you, Nick. I'll, I'll say yes, Pierce. Nick, no? No, and the negative. Okay, so the first one's Pierce? Yes, I'll, I'll vote to reconsider, it was raised. Next. Reconsideration? Negative. Madam oh, I'm sorry. I'm next, so I'd be yes. Well, I'm a yes, too. Sandra's in the yes as well. Okay. So that would be four to ten no's. That fails for reconsideration. Excellent, Madam Chair. I have another motion for reconsideration. Sorry. I did. Again, I voted oh, the majority and again there was public comment on but this. I'm assuming the rest of no's. Were there any abstentions? All right, ten no's. Okay, next one. Uh, I'm going to move for reconsideration in mass, Article 14, 15, 16, for reconsideration. Yeah, yeah, those are the uh, police union CBAs. I'll second. That's kind of like no-brainer. Second that motion. No, Sandy already seconded. I already got. All right, okay. let's take a vote. All those in favor of reconsidering the CBAs? Let's. I'm Mike, let's say. Yeah, yeah Pierce. So am I. <clears throat> Down this end. Jones? Yes. Sandra? Anybody else to the affirmative? So, four yes. Negatives? I should say it's easy to say anyone else. If you're against the reconsiderations, say this is a lot. This set up in the future. Uh, sitting see, here, we can't, can't see. see. Um, know that. We'll have to arrange it differently in the future. Yeah. All right, all right. All right. No abstentions. So reconsideration fails. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have no further motions Thank of reconsideration. Oh, what about the clock? I'm sorry? The clock was offered up for reconsideration. Right. I was not in the majority, Jerry. I cannot make a motion to reconsider if I was not in the majority. Jerry, you were in the majority on that one? Right. I, was, I abstained on that. All right. No, no. It would have to be someone who voted no. All right. I voted no, so I voted no. I'll, move, I'll request that we reopen that. Do I have a second? I'll second. This is the clock one, right? The clock one, yeah, Mike. 35. I'll open that. All right. All those in favor of reopening Bridal. the discussion? Bridal. Bridal on the affirmative. Blair. Pierce. Zanoy. Brent. All right, Latimer. LaBranch. No. Going down. 35. All Lord. 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 L
Jackson, yes. Jones in the affirmative. Bean, affirmative. Bean. Okay. All those, no? Sounds like unanimous. No, no, okay. no my question is. So I have one no and one abstention. So I have a vote on that of 12, 1, and 1. To reconsider. Okay. Discussion? Sandy? Um, I'm pretty familiar with the town clock. I think a lot of us old timers in town are. Um, it stood for many years on the um, Odd Fellows building, which burnt down in the 90s, kind of went into seclusion. We couldn't find it for a while, and um, it's been restored, and as uh, Rusty said, it's going to be placed on the uh, Central School property. Uh, it's $35,000. I think the, the group has done a, a terrific job uh, working, uh, designing. It's been a work in progress for, for, for some time. And I think, uh, I think it's well missed. And I think anybody that's been in town knows where Oddfellow's block was. It's now got a I don't know if they're condominiums or apartments or whatever they are. Uh, but uh, I think the group has done a terrific job and I think that uh, with some of the articles of the amount of money that's being asked for, I don't really think 35,000 is a lot uh, to show our support as a budget committee and uh, show our support to this community. Uh, I think it's well deserved. And so I would uh, ask my fellow board members, my committee members, to support this uh, article. Mm -hmm. Madam Chairman? Yes, Michael. You mic? Yeah, can I discuss, please? Um, thank you, Sandy, for a quick update. However, we were, last year when they had an article come in, the Budget Committee had decided to support it. Can you hear me back there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we came to the public hearing, Mr. Fred Rice got up and gave a very eloquent speech about the progress and the so-called details of this project. In the beginning, he said, I'll paraphrase, this is all supposed to be done by gifts and so forth to raise the money. No tax money involved. He made that very clear right here a year ago. And then we took a revote reconsideration and it we voted to turn the request down so in that spirit of him not being here tonight I don't know if he's even aware if there was a war article in this year or not I'm trying to cover the base for him because I'm sure he'd have more or less the same thing to say I can't speak for it now I'm guessing on that I'll be honest but I think in the beginning as I remember when Mr. Weber and crew came into the selectman uh, uh, meeting and explained to them, the selectmen at that time, what they were going to do with the clock. Well, we've taken a long time to get, get it fixed. No debate there. And I don't even know where it is for sure. But anyway, it's taken a long time. And I, don't, I think there's a lot of people who are not happy with it going on the school property. So I think we, if you put all this together about they were supposed to use private funds, some people don't like where it's going, and on and on and on. I think that we need to just take the same position that most of us did the last time. I'm definitely against this. Um, I've only been in uh, Hampton for uh, five years. Uh, spent about 30 years down in Texas, and uh, and, and I think that uh, the traditions, the history that we have for this unique town, uh, it, it's unique, and, and I think for thirty-five thousand dollars to augment what our private citizens have gone out and, and put a lot of personal effort in, I, I, I just think we we should step up, match some of the taxpayer money with it, and and, uh, and redisplay what see, I've never seen the clock, but it, I bet it's iconic. So uh, I'd like to see it displayed. Anyone else? Yes, Madam Chair. Yes. The uniqueness of this town. It does not have a clock. 
did. That's right, it did. Yeah. And when it did, I was living elsewhere. And when it didn't, I moved into town. Aren't you all lucky? Apparently, <laughs> yeah. This is effectively about to have me out of town. <laughs> but on, on a more serious note, Madam Chair, the uh, the town clock is being noted because it goes ding dong or something like that every hour, every half hour, whatever it is. And everyone in town is going to be forcibly have money removed from them in the form of taxation to pay for this ding dong. Okay. Yet not everyone in town is going to be able to hear the ding dong. Furthermore, the entire effort to restore the clock while I applaud it is a private effort, and I'm okay with it as a private effort to fund it with compulsory taxation is very inappropriate, especially when you note that not everyone who's paying those taxes are gonna be able to hear the ding dong every half hour or hour, whatever it is. So I do uh, oppose it and encourage my fellow honorable board members, committee members, to consider that we shouldn't be imposing taxes on those who cannot enjoy the services. Thank you. Rusty, how much how much has been put up in private money? About a hundred thousand. A little over a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So approximately a hundred and ten thousand dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was one of the ones who voted no on this, and before we take a vote, I'm gonna tell you all I'm gonna change my vote, and this is why. There is private money that went in, and we are not imposing taxes on the voters. The voters will get the opportunity to vote on this warrant article as they see fit. I do think enough time and effort has gone into it, and while um, Representative Rice may have swayed us last year with a good argument, this is clearly $40,000 less than we was asking last year, and everybody appears to have done their part. So is there any other yeah, conversation you want to this? Yes, we do down here. Talk about the ding dong. <laughs> um, I think people, uh, some of us old timers, and not our these new timers. You don't look that old, Sandra. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Getting old about a minute. But um, if we, the old folk that can remember the Odd Fellows building, can clearly remember the clock. Um, and I live a little bit of distance away from where it will be uh, at Center School, so I'm not going to hear the ding dong, which that's okay. I don't mind being taxed on it. Uh, I think this is a town that is proud of its heritage. We have great things going on down at Tuck. We've got the St. James House, um, the James House. We've got all kinds of terrific things going on in this town, and I think the town clock is just one part of it. Um, there's been a lot of work done to restore it, and I again would ask this committee to do the right thing, and the right thing is to support Article Number 44. Thank you. Also, last one. I just want to say, I uh, I wear these red suspenders proudly for the gentleman who, who actually started this whole thing. So I am in, very much in favor of it. Are we ready for a vote? Yeah. No. Crowd. Yeah. Madam Chair, I just make one quick remark. You hear frequently the term public-private partnership. The public needs to participate. It appears the private part has done very well in its participation. Thank you, Brother. Sonny? Yeah, I gather there's $110,000 raised to... 102. Correct. 102. 102,000. That should, if we put a salt shed off for 100,000, we should be able to finish the job for 102,000. I'm sure the original cost of the clock was in the hundreds of dollars. Um, I haven't changed my position. It's um, it's a private matter. You know, what? you don't need to tell time. So. All right. What happened to those microphones? You know, he didn't oh, the microphone. Madam Chair, yep. my microphone's working.
working I'm ready to speak when you're ready to entertain my again? wisdom. Again? For a third time? Yeah. Let's take a vote. No. Let's, Let's take, take a vote. Let's take a vote. I take, I take, I take note, note of what uh, my uh, Honorable Brian Lapham, fellow member, said about the red suspenders in order of the person who started this, who started it to be a 100% privately funded activity. And in honor of him, I suggest we vote no. So allow it to continue to generate private funds as a private exercise. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Jones. I'm ready for a vote. Mr. Bridal, you just got the wrong Bridal the affirmative. Blair. Uh, not, not me. I'm <laughs> glad, though, not you. Jerry. Abstain. Brian. Yes. The great clock debate was a unit. Eileen, is a yes. LaBranche, yes. No. I didn't bring Mike, no? Yeah. Okay. O'Loughlin, yes. Vlad, yes. Nickerson, yes. Being affirmative. Tim? Uh, ding dong negative. <laughs> I'm, I'm also negative, Madam Chairman. Are you negative? I did have you as negative. Give me one minute. Sunny, no, I'm you get that? Sunny is no, Madam Chairman. What? Sunny is no. I got. Uh, let me read these off. If I've got anything different, let me know. I have bridal. Yes, Scott. I've got yes. Mike. No. Sunny. No. Jerry, you're abstaining. Right. Brian. Yes. Eileen. Yes. Steve, yes. Mike, no. Jim, yes. Bob, yes. Sandy, yes. Tim, yes. I'm sorry, Tim, no. And Phil, yes. Do I have that correct? Madam Chair. Let him call the vote. She just did? No, I want to hear the total. The total. One second. I have nine yes, four no, and one abstention. Okay, that's fine. Madam Chair? Yes. Yes, Mr. Jones. May I move we adjourn this historic meeting at 9.42 p.m.? And also move uh, second to your second your ding dong historic motion. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Aye.